Hi and welcome back to LearnVisualFoxPro.com. In this lesson we're going to take a look at user-defined functions and procedure. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to create a program that's uh, will have a bunch of functions and procedures in them and uh, to see how we call them and return values from our functions and procedures and how we accept arguments to our functions and procedures. So Excuse me. So here we've declared and rather defined four functions and procedures. In VFP, functions and procedures are interchangeable. That is, Visual Fox Pro makes no distinction between a function, whether I use a function keyword or whether I use a procedure keyword. Note that I can return values from either function or procedure. I can also accept arguments using the L parameters <coughs> keyword and specifying a list. Um, I can um, set up my argument v variables and I can use a return in all my functions. So I can, I'm going to do two more functions. Function, uh, fun three. Now note here uh, this simple function, the word function, the name of the function, and a single statement. Note there is no um, statement that, dec that uh, declares the end of a function. In the old days there was none. Um, later on we do have from Visual Fox Pro 3 and up the end and, um, and func keyword and of course there's the end proc right for completeness but if you leave end func and end proc off once there are no more statements to execute or as in this case visual fox but when this function is called visual fox will execute this statement it goes down it sees that it's another definition for a procedure it knows to stop and so will not go beyond um, the procedure declaration okay so we have a bunch of functions in a demo func's PRG file, and um, then now we can set up 
the main body. And the main body is, is usually at the top of the PRG file. And we'll simply call uh, these functions that we have. So what I'll do is call the, um, so I'll say phone one, and this is to call first function. I'll create a loop, and then I'll call um, fun2 with the value of x as an argument. And I'll also call proc2 with x plus 1 as an argument. And I'll end 4. Well, that looks so. Prefer the next keyword. Um, Okay, so we've called two of the functions that I could simply call, I could say, so in those examples we simply call the function or procedure natively, um, that is by specifying the name, open parenthesis, and if there are any arguments, I can um, call a function from within a if statement, I can say if uh, proc1, which accepts no argument, but returns a value is equal to i there, then I can uh, take some action. And here we'll call this two last function of ours, fun3 and proc3. So we'll just... In the old days, we would call, a, we had to call a function with an equal sign, uh, by not assigning it a value, so it would have something like this, fun3, if we wanted to call a function that way. Otherwise, we had to use the do fun3. So, okay, so let me explain this a little bit. Um, now, we can simply call the function, if it doesn't return a value, as the name of the function followed by a parenthesis. In the old days, we either had to, if it didn't return a value, we either had to use the do command, do and the function name, there would be no brackets, do fun3, or we could assign the value to a non-existent variable, and that is how we'll be able to call the function uh, which looks close to um, the way we call functions today. So that's just a little bit of history. Okay, so if you do see this in some old code, the equal sign without a variable um, preceding is similar to just a function name and brackets. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll call the uh, proc3, do proc3 using the do command. Okay, and then here we'll put end of program. So we first defined our functions, which doesn't matter the order, but we have a bunch of functions within this PRG file. We call the first one, then we do a loop, and then we call uh, two more functions within the body of the loop. So these functions both will be called three times. And then here I call a function, or rather a procedure. Again, they're interchangeable in Visual Fox Pro. So if the value returned from this procedure is equal to high there, then I want to call um, these two function. In fact, what I want to do is put an else there. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this code and see what the results are. And the first one is an error. Okay, so it says PRG file func1 not found. And that's true because I only have fun one. <coughs> Let's add a C. That's, that's fine. Change that one. Change that one. Okay, so let's save by pressing Control Enter, execute, and that's it. I'm a function that does not return a value. Um, let's go back in. I was expecting more results. Funk1 says hi. 
didn't see that on the screen anywhere. Okay, so what it did, it returns high. But I did not just print the value. I just simply called the function, so high was lost. So what I could do is put a question mark here, print the value. And likewise for these two, I did not do anything with the value returned from the function. So now I'm going to do something with it by modifying and say print. This one was fine because within the body of the function itself, there was a print statement, which is why I saw the results. Okay, okay so let's clear the screen again. Okay, and so we execute. Um, hi is returned from the first function, then we're in the loop. And both functions are called three times, so we've got three sets of results. And then towards the end, um, I'm a function that does not return a value. So we know <coughs> that this is the one func3 being executed based on this condition here because proc1 does return high there. Now, just one more thing before we wrap up this session is that there are times where we may have a bunch of functions. Over time we developed a core set of routines that we have and we want to share them among um, other projects that we may develop. And so what we can do is to take out all these nifty functions and put them into a program um, library file. So I'm going to cut these out, Control X. And I'm going to create a new PRG file, so modicum command, and I'm going to call this proglib. And all these will do, all this this um, this uh, program file will do is to store functions. And so as I build new functions that I think are really nifty and they're generic enough to be reused um, multiple times in other projects, I simply add them to this library and to make them available to my demo function. So now these functions are nowhere there. If I try to execute, pressing Control E, I get that um, func1 PRG does not exist. Visual functional by default, when you call a procedure function or any name that is not a memory variable, variable, it assumes that it's a PRG file and attempts to look for it on the disk. And if it's not found, then of course we get the error message. So what we want to do is what we want to do is to make um, the proglib uh, visible to our um, demo funks. And to do that, we use a set command, say set um, procedure to, and then we specify the name. Of course, if we have multiple libraries, as you can see with IntelliSense, we can specify file one, file two, file three. Um, etc. separated by commas and um, until we're satisfied. I only have one so we'll go prog lib dot prg and so now close screen, I'll clear the screen here when I do my function again I get the same results though the code is separated into two separate files. So before we had object-oriented programming, <laughs> this was what we had to do. We created libraries of Unicode, and I mean it's still applicable today in some circumstances. Um, it's warranted. You could probably, in, a, in your class, um, set a library to these codes and have your methods um, call them um, to get their behavior inherited or inherent in your classes. Okay, so that's it for um, a closer look at functions and procedures programming concepts for VFP.